Now, I wanted to make a game where you have four notes and it will give you a pattern and you have to repeat that pattern. It sounds very simple, but it was surprisingly hard to create. I started by making the costumes in the backdrop. I wanted to make it so there was some sort of indicator when a note had been activated other than the fact that the note would play. So I decided to make some white squares in the background. That way the note would hide and it would seemingly, seemingly turn white. I used white squares simply so that all I had to do was use a hide block and put in no extraneous code. The simpler the better. Next I tried to choose what notes would be best. Uh, eventually I settled on the piano notes and after a bit of speeding up and testing around with reversals and everything I got to what I thought was about a right speed. At the very end however off screen I do make it a little slower to make it easier. So now I simply make the notes and then I get coding. So I first duplicate all the the one sprite, the first sprite I made, and I first duplicate it to make every single square. And I try to make sure that they're centered, but it's a little difficult. I also add the notes to them and make sure their colors are different. Now I don't keep these colors in the end, and next I begin experimenting with some ways to make the backdrop. So at first I thought I can make it green and make it change color but that seemed a little cheesy looking to me. I tried different speeds to see if they would look better, but none of them really looked good and sometimes it was even a little confusing. Instead, I made the background orange and I decided to change this block to yellow because I wanted to stick to very simplistic colors. Now I began coding. First I made a variable, or a list I mean, called notes. That would represent what notes were in the sequence recently played. Then I also made the scripts in each square defining what would happen when the square was broadcasted. I used signals to tell the square when to sound the note and to disappear and reappear. Basically, I made it hide itself so that it would turn white, it would sound the note, and then it would show itself again. It was pretty simple and I did it. I named the messages based on color to help keep everything organized. The next thing I did was create the level variable. This would tell what level the player was on and I was going to do it such that based on what level the player was on, a different amount of notes would play. So if you were on level 4, 4 notes would play, level 6, 6 notes would play, etc, etc. I wanted to do it in key binds, but I later on changed this to a question. That way it'd be easier for the player not only to track what keys they've already typed in, but also it would be easier to code. Here I'm simply adding labels to every note, and originally I made this so that people would know what key corresponds to what note. But in the end, I changed this to saying what key would correspond to what number would correspond to what note. Now I tested that all the key binds worked. Um, this is this just seemed important to me that I make sure this worked before I continue. Uh, and then I decided to move on to the actual code. So first, I started by setting the level number to one, and I just quickly had the idea to write pay attention in the background and decided to implement it before I forgot about my idea. Then I went back to my code and I, I came up with my logic right there. Now, I know it was only a split second and even if this is at two times speed, it actually didn't take very long, but I knew exactly how I was going to do it. Let me very quickly explain. I decided I would have a list. The list, would, it would randomly choose notes and it would do that however many times the level was, so if the level was three, it would randomly choose three notes. And each time it chose a note, it would add that note to the list. Then it would ask the player what the pattern was. The player would respond and it would check the player's answer to see if that matched the list that the machine came up with. If it does, then it changes the note by one, or the level by one, I'm sorry and then it restarts the process. And if the player fails, then it has the game over screen and it forces the player to restart. 
Okay, so now that you understand how I intended to make this, let's go back to the actual process of making it. So here I'm establishing the code that will make it activate the note whenever it chooses the note. So if it chooses the note 1, it will activate note 1 so that the player can tell what notes it's supposed to, that are supposed to enter back in. I also put the repeat loop in there and I told it to add the note that it chose to the list so that it would know exactly what to do. Next, I put a wait in 2. Now, as I said before, I was originally going to use keybinds to tell what the pattern entry back in was, and this is just a quick time cut. Uh, I changed the background and I added a couple of finishing touches, and so what I decided to do is instead of using keybinds, because a scratch can't sense keybinds at the same time as it waits for them, so instead of using keybinds, I decided I would use a question. So, right here I go into sensing after I've forgotten what the question one was. Uh, I quickly got another idea for the background and I wanted to quickly make it before I forgot about it. So then I made my answer sensor. So, at first this seemed like it would be a bit complicated, but it's actually quite simple. Basically, depending on how it'll repeat by the length of notes, so the length of however many notes, however many notes there were, and it will sense if so-and-so letter of the answer is the same as so and so part of notes. So it has a note counter and it changes that note counter by one each time. So if letter one matches number one of notes then it c and there's only one item in notes then it just continues for the forever loop. But if it doesn't and if there's two items in notes then it'll say if letter two matches item two of notes and etc etc. Right here I just quickly made a game over screen and I ended up changing this off screen later on. Now I made a game over function as well. So I had already gotten the code that would make it repeat by the length of notes, sensing if it was the correct letter. And I simply did it so that if it didn't, it would activate a game over, and if it did, it would do absolutely nothing and allow the loop to continue. Next I did some quick testing by setting the level to 3 and making sure that I could enter in the correct password, or not password, the correct pattern, and it would say I was correct, and if I didn't, it would say I was incorrect. I changed the game over script later on as well, and I also went on to make the sound effects a little longer. Now, if you're wondering what change I made to the game over script, I very simply made it hide all the other parts, like all the other notes, and I didn't do that in the video because I didn't think it would be necessary, but then I realized it was blocking the game over screen. So yeah, now I had my entire thing, and it would t it had put a forever loop in it, and I had the script that would make it change the level each time it completed, and then I just added the hide script. Now I did some quick testing, and I saw that it actually worked. So the finished product was not too different. I only made a couple touches, I hid some variables, and I changed up the game over screen. I also added this sprite. I didn't get the sprite on my own, I have it in some of my other games, but I got it from a creator named Chaotic, and it basically is a uh, variable display sprite, and it can display any number of variables, so I just quickly put that one in to show the level. I was thinking of using the variable itself, but I think this one looks better. And that's about it. I did some quick testing and it works pretty well. Now there's going to be a link in the description to the actual game if you want to check it out. And now that you can see how it's made, I think you might enjoy it a lot more versus if you played it by yourself without having any idea how what went into it. I also went on to add a variable that would make sure that the player could click each note to test it but the player wouldn't be able to click it while the pattern was being given. And I did this to make sure the player didn't accidentally click it while the pattern was being given and it would confuse them.